Removing scratches is a very delicate art, much the same as polishing your paint. You see, clear coat is very thin, about the thickness of the sticky note, so there's little room for error. Today, we're gonna to discuss a few ideas to think about when you're compounding your paint with a dual action polisher. That's coming up today on this episode of Details. My name is Larry Casilla, and I'm a professional detailer. Together with Autoblog, we're creating the ultimate collection of quick car care videos. This is Autoblog Details. Here are the items you'll need for this task. When paint becomes dull, or in other words, when the clear coat has thousands of tiny little scratches in it, the paint needs to be sanded down until the surface of the paint is completely flat with no gouges or scratches. Compound can be thought of as a liquid sandpaper designed to remove the damaged layers of clear coat, revealing a fresh, flat surface. But keep in mind that there's only so much clear coat that can be abraded before a repaint is required. First, apply tape to any adjoining areas to protect against accidentally bumping into the trim or moldings with your pad. Next, apply a microfiber cutting pad to your favorite dual action polisher. Then, apply compound to the pad and ensure every fiber is coated in compound by massaging the liquid into the pad with your hands. Now that the pad is primed, add three more drops of compound and place the face of the pad on the paint prior to engaging the machine. Speed settings will vary by machine and type of pad used, but a setting of three or four is a good place to start. Take note that if the compounding pad is not rotating, little to no compounding work is being done to the paint. Adjustments to speed, pressure, and machine angle may be needed. Apply light to medium pressure to the machine so that the microfiber pad compresses slightly. Arm speed is moderate to slow, but keep in mind the slower your arm speed, the more compounding work is being done to the paint's surface. Work the machine in a 2 foot by 2 foot area for approximately 1 to 2 minutes before wiping the area with a clean microfiber towel. After initial polishing, inspect the area for any remaining scratches and repeat the process if necessary. Remember, when you're abrading the surface of the paint, little bits of clear coat are being removed by the compounding abrasives and then get stuck in the fibers of the microfiber cutting pad. As the pad fills up with the extra residue, it interferes with the effectiveness of the cutting pad and the compounding process. After one or two 2x2 two two sections, you must clean the cutting disc with compressed air or a clean microfiber towel to dislodge the old clear coat before starting a new section. Once clean, reapply three squirts of compound to your pad and begin the next section. The compounding process will remove scratches but leave behind a dull whitish color. This is normal and to be expected. These compounding marks will need to be removed with a less abrasive liquid called polish. For more info on that, please watch our polishing video at autoblog.com slash details. Compounding when removing swirls is a vital step on the road to perfect paint, but it does require a bit of practice to do it safely. I always recommend using scrap metal from a junkyard or an old car to hone your compounding skills. Lastly, remember the goal when compounding any car is to leave as much clear coat as possible while removing the imperfection. This ensures your paint will have the most protection available when it needs it down the road. For more how-to car care videos, visit autoblog.com slash details. I'm Larry Casilla from AmmoNYC.com, and we'll see you next time.